Uh, so welcome to SC602, our course on control of nonlinear dynamical systems. Yeah, we are well into the you know midst of things. We have already started doing the Lyapunov theorem, which is the key results in analysis of stability of systems. Okay, so to recap, we uh, were doing these Lyapunov stability theorems. All right, so we've already defined what they are and uh, uh, what the stability notions are. And now we have gone ahead and started to already discuss the Lyapunov stability theorems. Yeah, we started with the more basic version, stability, uniform stability, uh, and then you have asymptotic stability, uh, uniform asymptotic stability, global uniform asymptotic stability, then the two notions of local and global exponential stability. Okay, so we saw that. Uh, once we had the setup of positive definite functions, radial unbounded functions, decrescent functions, uh, the statement of the Lyapunov theorems was really easy, okay, really easy, uh, not difficult to verify either, yeah. Once you understand what is positive definite function, and I really hope you do, yeah. Uh, I know there were some uh, mistakes last time when I asked a few questions, so remember uh, these few points, yeah. If, if some state do not appear in a function, it cannot be definite. Yeah, if you have things like x1 plus x2 whole square cannot be definite. Yeah, so we have to, so these things somehow uh, should not be uh, material that you need to look at your notes to uh, sort of remember. Okay, so this is something you need to remember. Yeah, it should be at the back of your mind that these easy tests, right, that if uh, the function can be zero anywhere other than the origin other than the zero state, then there is a problem, okay, these are problems, okay. So similarly, we also know that some keywords are associated with some results, right. We know that positive definiteness is connected to, uh, you know, stability and asymptotic stability and similarly your negative, de sorry, uh, negative definiteness gives you asymptotic stability. Similarly, decrescence is connected to uniform properties, yeah, uniformity. And finally, radial unboundedness is connected to global properties. So, although we, I, I was very clear, I did not mention all uh, properties, okay, uh, separately, yeah. But it, this is something that should be relatively clear to you that uh, I can add and subtract one word, and I will get the requisite property, okay. So, like I said, we defined uniform asymptotic stability locally. And we define uniform asymptotic stability globally, but we did not talk about global asymptotic stability, right. So if I just drop the decrescence here, I will immediately get global asymptotic stability, which is not necessarily uniform, okay. And remember that for nonlinear systems, these are, uh, none of these properties are easy to obtain, yeah. It's not like uh, something is free. The other thing that I have also mentioned, so these are all points to remember, yeah. Some of these points that I mentioned are key points, yeah. Uh, the easy tests, the word associations, and finally, uh, that you know, if you, uh, if you, you know, add and subtract some words, you get some properties and so on. That's that's evident. Um, and finally, also that when you go to uh, exponential properties, they are naturally uniform. And also, if you are uh, dynamical system the right hand side does not explicitly contain time then uniformity is free okay and so so some of these are things that you just have to keep at the back of your mind these are not things that i would like you to refer to your notes for this yeah it's almost something you memorize yeah just memorize these yeah similarly for linear systems asymptotic stability exponential stability are the same like linear time invariant system because i can actually solve them and you have seen we have done the examples that it essentially gives you, you know, your uh, exponential, the, the rates of convergence are always exponential, okay, all right, great. Now, we also did a few examples where you could, you saw that I sort of played around with some systems just to get some properties and so on. We also looked at finally the uh, pendulum system, which again, I have modified it because I wanted to make my analysis simpler. 
uh, we will look at the more uh, or the actual pendulum without this guy later on when we look at lasalle invariance because we already saw last time that without this term right without this term what goes away without this term this term goes away right and if this goes away v dot is only negative semi definite yeah and that's again a problem because all we get is stability whereas in reality we know that a damped pendulum is just going to stop okay it's just going to stop it's not going to it's not going to just stay bounded and things like that here i'm moving my hand you can see that's why it's staying bounded but actually no if i stop my hand it's going to stop okay a damped pendulum is always going to stop okay so that's the reality but we are not able to prove it with this function which is the energy okay uh, which seems like the most natural choice for the lyapunov candidate in this case yeah so for such cases also we have results like the lasalle invariance and the babalat's lemma so we'll discuss them subsequently so when we do that then i will drop this term and we'll do the analysis okay all right great then um finally there is anyway some example but but anyway i mean this is not such a complicated example anyway uh, here you have this uh, second order system all right this is a worked out example in the notes itself so it's that's why it's relatively easy to follow uh, here you have a second order system you can see that without these terms if you get rid of these terms what is it what is this system harmonic oscillator it's just a harmonic and you know that it is just going to go in circle 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 so just stable and it's not going to be asymptotically doing anything so let's see what happens because of addition of these terms all right again the authors who came up with this example are also doing nifty things like i am right they just playing around with terms so that they can get good results this is i don't think this is any real system all right uh, but anyway so it's not so uncommon is what i'm trying to tell you all right so if i take this lyapunov function very straight forward right this is what i i took for the harmonic oscillator also right and you know that this is radially unbounded and all that um so uh, if i take the de derivative right x1 x1 dot and x2 x2 dot for the harmonic oscillator i would have got zero right we just did that example but here because of these additional terms i will get c x1 square x1 square plus x2 square and c x2 square times x1 square plus x2 square so if you actually combine them you will get c x1 square plus x2 squared whole squared all right now uh, it should be obvious to you that depending on the sign of c i will get some definiteness okay if c is negative i will get negative definiteness i will get basically v dot is negative different i hope you believe that this is not like x1 plus x2 whole square this is x1 square plus x2 square whole square so this is actually a positive definite function okay this cannot be zero anywhere but at the origin okay so if c is just negative just a negative constant then v dot is negative definite okay and then we have asymptotic stability okay so uh, remember this is not exponential stability yeah because our class k functions here were of this kind and the class k function here or the class kr function here is of this form yeah x1 4 plus x2 4 basically it is higher order so basically what if you remember for exponential stability we need three same order class k or class kr functions in this case for the v i have one kind of class k function class kr function and for the v dot i have another kind of class kr function these are not the same order of magnitude because if you remember i gave you the example if you increase the power then i cannot have a comparison like this you cannot make the comparison with constants yeah this will never work all right so not exponential stable not exponentially stable but uniformly globally asymptotically stable or globally uniformly asymptotic however you want to say it. yeah many folks use ugas many use guas so whatever whatever suits you okay uh great uh, so this is a relatively simple example what happens if c is positive 
then it should be obvious that v dot is actually positive definite okay uh, actually it doesn't mean anything until now to us we've not done any instability results as such yeah we've just defined instability we've just mentioned that if the system is not stable or not uniformly stable it is unstable okay but we've not given any tests or theorems corresponding to instability okay that is actually part of the assignment yeah so instability theorems that will be actually part of the homework okay so that you have to find an instability theorem okay so there do exist instability theorems and it does turn out that this system is unstable yeah. i'm giving you that yeah but you have to prove it using certain results okay these results look very much like lyapunov theorems but they are not coming from lyapunov himself they are from some authors some subsequent authors okay all right great uh, any questions in all this material lyapunov theorems and stability and so on yes yep absolutely that's always the case hmm? all the results are purely sufficient results so yes yeah um i don't think it is exponentially stable but yeah but i can't say conclusively i agree hmm? all right true all right great so today what i want to do is what we promised that after we have looked at the lyapunov theorems after we have looked at some examples we wanted to uh you know talk about the um proof of some of these okay so we want to look at the proof of some of the stability theorems so again i will say that the proofs are uh sort of motivated from vidyasagar's book uh to some extent khalil's book to some extent some notes i found online uh mostly because uh, different sources because i have tried to distill it into a simple enough uh looking proof that we can follow all right uh, that's the only purpose otherwise yeah you can pick up any uh, good text in non linear control and you can expect to find this proof all right uh, i prove only two results a stability result and a asymptotic stability result hmm? everything else is assignment all right uh, they are very simple because once you have done these it's uh, uh, doing a little bit beyond it is pretty easy yeah i can promise you that all right um, great so proof of stability theorems the first one that we try to prove is the stability in the sense of lyapunov result okay what does it say so now i give you the complete statement because earlier it was split into pieces so here we try to make the complete statement okay so what does it say the theorem itself there exists a v which maps time and states in some ball of radius r to real numbers for some positive r such that i have v t0 is 0 for all time i can even say that right uh, and then i have v to be a c1 function yeah so continuously differentiable function c1 is continuously once continuously differentiable so the derivative also is expected to be continuous okay so once continuously differentiable and positive definite then if v dot is negative semi definite that is v dot is just less than equal to 0 just as a function um for all x in br again yeah remember this entire analysis and all the trajectories we are expecting them to be in br so all of this so even the v dot less than equal to 0 is in the same domain if i escape the domain then there is an issue yeah of course v dot could be negative beyond the domain but i don't care because i'm not going to use it yeah so the point is within the domain it has to satisfy because otherwise i have a problem i might escape the domain and then i don't even have positive definiteness of v then i am in some soup yeah so v dot is also negative semi definite in the domain uh then we say that zero is a stable equilibrium in the sense of lyapunov okay so this was the theorem right just written in complete detail nothing different from what we've already seen right 
um, I hope all of you are very clear on this uh, statement already because you've seen it a couple of times now. Uh, so, how do we prove it? Remember the stability definition. I have already marked it here. Huh? So, we have to prove it via stability definition. There is nothing else we have. We just have to prove this definition holds. If I have this theorem to be if for this, if I have these conditions to be satisfied, I want this stability definition to hold okay for this general nonlinear system. Yeah, I have not assumed anything here. It's a f dot uh, x dot is f t x t. So uh, yeah, I've assumed a very very general nonlinear system. Just that I have these sort of conditions holding to. Okay. So very I mean so pretty powerful actually if you look at the result itself because I never have to solve the system. Yeah. But I still want that this condition holds. What is it? Uh, the stability definition says again for your benefit that for all epsilon positive there exists a delta which can depend on epsilon and t0. I am only proving stability. So it is allowed to depend on initial time. Okay. Initial time is not a problem. Hmm? Such that norm x0 is less than delta implies that the solutions lie within an epsilon ball for all time greater than or equal to t0. Okay, we will start with a simple case and move on. Uh, what does it mean uh, for us for v to be positive definite? It means that the initial condition is 0 v is c1. This is already part of the assumption. Yeah. Uh, then positive definiteness requires that v dominates a class k function of norm of x. All right. This is what is the meaning of positive definiteness and uh, we want of course this is a class k function. So, we require that it is also 0 at 0, it is also continuous and it is strictly increasing. All right. Okay. Great. Great. Okay. So, this is just to refresh. Huh? All these are refreshers. Okay. We already know all this. I am just writing it out so that when we do the proof, we do not have to you know go back to the definitions. Okay. Excellent. So, I am going to now do a stage wise proof, first do a very simple proof. I will say that let us assume this phi norm of x is actually alpha norm x squared. Okay. So, I will just assume that this happens. I am just saying that the class k function has a very nice structure. Yeah. That is actually equal to alpha norm x squared uh, for some alpha positive. Okay. So, I am just assuming a very simple structure here. Okay just to make our life easy again. It could be any class k function, but I am saying it is actually alpha norm x square. Suppose this is the case. Hmm? Then how can I do the proof? Because this will give me a nice hint on how to do the proof for the general case also. All right. Excellent. So, I am saying that v t x is greater than equal to alpha norm x square for again x lying in this ball b r and for all time, this is the positive definiteness condition. Right. This is just the positive definiteness restated for the simpler class k function. Hmm? Okay. Uh, what about this v dot? It is just negative semi definite, right? It is just saying that v dot is less than or equal to 0 for all x in br for all t greater than or equal to t. Okay. Nothing too complex, it is just the negatives. So, I have stated everything I have from the Lyapunov theorem. All right. Of course, there is continuity and all but other facts are stated here right now what do i do i start with an epsilon somebody I mean, the user is giving me an epsilon from that i construct an epsilon 1 which is the smaller of epsilon and r okay why this is obvious okay why do i do this why do you think i do this Absolutely. The states have to remain in the ball of radius r. Okay. Therefore, if you give me a epsilon ball which is larger than r, it does not make sense for me to consider that large epsilon ball. It is better for me to consider r itself. Yeah, because it is irrelevant for me to use the large epsilon ball because r is smaller. Right. So, I will just take the r ball and work with the r ball because my trajectories have to stay within the r ball. Okay, that I am ensuring and guaranteeing anyway. Okay, so therefore I don't work with epsilon. I work with epsilon one because it is obvious that if the states are within epsilon one, 
then they are within epsilon anyway. So I am done. I don't have to do anything more. It's actually a better result if you think. Okay, great. So what do I have for all x in Br? Alpha norm x square is less than or equal to v t x. This is just this written in the flipped form. And this is less than or equal to v t zero x zero. Why? Why do I get this? V dot is less than or equal to zero. So v as a function of time cannot be increasing. So if I wrote this a little bit more carefully, this highlighted guy. It will actually be v t x t is less than or equal to v t 0 x 0. So the left hand side is a function of time, right? And I have mentioned that this v dot is less than or equal to 0. So along the trajectories, v dot cannot be increasing. Okay. So whatever is the value of v at initial time, its value at any time beyond initial time. has to be strict less than equal to this cannot be increasing okay so this is simply coming from this so this one sentence now codifies both our results okay and this one sentence is enough for us hmm? now now what do i do i i do forget the middle thing this is useless for me so i just look at these two because this is in terms of initial condition this is in terms of final state so i have alpha norm x square is less than vt0 x0 right and from here I can get a bound on norm x square. What is stability? It requires me to bound norm x. So I have already come to a stage where I have a bound on norm x square. Yeah, pretty cool. Now what do I know? What do I want? I will already state what I want. Forget proving it in that <coughs> linear. So I don't like to do this linear proof because nobody can follow anything why I did those steps. Huh? Now it is easy to follow. If this is less than epsilon 1 squared epsilon 1 squared if this guy is less than epsilon 1 squared i am done right because then i have norm x squared less than or equal to epsilon 1 square so norm x is less than epsilon 1 and i am done so what do i want i want this whatever is in the green bracket hmm? so my work is cut out because if this happens norm x square is less than epsilon 1 square which is less than epsilon square and i am done stability done right now you will remember that i have not chosen a delta yet okay and that is what is going to come out of this guy okay that is what is going to come out of this guy because you see the left hand side is depending on initial condition and also time t0 and the right hand side contains an epsilon so somehow i have to be able to solve for x0 from here okay that is the whole idea so once I do that I will be able to get an epsilon okay and my claim is it is uh, so so because from here I need v t 0 x 0 to be less than alpha epsilon 1 square just rewriting this guy my claim is that I can choose delta I will choose delta such that this happens that supremum over x less than delta norm x less than delta v t 0 x is less than or equal to alpha epsilon. I am saying this is possible. I can choose such a delta. Okay. It is not giving you a how to choose, but it is saying I can choose such a delta that this happens. Okay.